In Power Apps, you should always add a pop-up to confirm the user's actions. I've done a video on this in the past, but this time I'll show you how to build the pop-up within a component library. This will allow you to use that pop-up in as many apps as you like without having to rebuild it each time and save you lots of time in the process. You'll be able to adjust colors, text sizes, and text and button functions to fit any of the apps that you build. So let's go. First, we're going to go to make.powerapps.com. And if you haven't already pinned component libraries to the side navigation, click on more, discover all, and then scroll down to under app enhancements, component libraries, you can hit that pin. When we click on component libraries, this is where we're going to do a new component library. I'm going to call this pop-up library and click create. Now that we have our new component library, let's create a new component. And actually, let's just rename this one my pop-up. Before we go any further, we have to define our custom properties. These will show up as editable fields when you plug this component into your apps. In order for us to make our buttons functional, we have to enable an experimental feature in our app called Enhanced Component Properties. And for that, we can go to Settings, Upcoming Features, Experimental tab, and if you scroll down, you have to turn on Enhanced Component Properties. Now let's create all the custom properties that we're going to want to customize when we eventually plug this component into each of our apps. You can create more or less of these depending on your needs, but let's go through the ones that I did. Let's create the first one. I'll do this one and call it Pop-Up Fill with a data type color. And we click Create. I'll also set its default value to this, which represents the color white. The next one will be called pop-up width with a data type number. And I'll set the pop-up width to 500. Pop-up height will also be a number. And I'll set its default value to 300. Message will be data type text. And I'll enter its default value, enter text here. Message text color will be data type color, and I'm going to leave its value as black. Message text size will be data type number and a default value of 15. LB text will stand for left button text and will be of data type text. And I'll set its default value to say cancel. LB fill will be data type color. And I'll update its default property to color dot light gray. LB text size will be a data type number. And again, with a default size of 15. LB on select will be a property type event with a return data type of text. This is why we enabled the enhanced component properties earlier. I'll set its default to empty double quotes as we don't want to predefine what our button's function will be. That'll vary depending on the app that we plug this component into. And for the right button, we're going to do the same thing we did with the left. RB text will be data type text. I'm just going to make its default value to submit. RB fill will be a color. And I'm going to set its default value to dark slate gray. RB text size will be a number with a default value of 15. And finally, our RB on select will also be an event with a return data type text. And we're going to set the default value to blank quotation marks. And with that out of the way, let's actually build our pop up component. Let's insert our main container. It'll be a vertical container. I'll rename it con main. And this will serve as a semi-transparent layer between the app and the pop-up. And it's going to make it so the users can't accidentally click something behind the pop-up. Now let's create our actual pop-up. So within our main container, let's insert another vertical container. And I'll rename this con pop-up. Now let's add the pop-up message. Insert a text label and let's rename it. I'll call it LBL message.
Next, we need to add our buttons and give our pop-up some functionality. This time we insert a horizontal container. Let's rename it con buttons. Now let's add in our buttons. Let's insert two buttons and rename them. One will be button left and one will be button right. First, let's select our button left and edit the following properties. Do the same on the right button, except replace LB with RB in your code. And then we're done. Let's save and publish. And now when we go into an existing app of mine, this is my task app. Let's see how easy it is to bring in our custom pop-up and start using it right away. You want to go to the insert tab and then click this get more components icon. This is the one that I just created pop-up library. I'm going to expand and then select my pop-up and click import and it is successfully imported. Now it's going to live under your library components and all you have to do is click on it and it gets inserted right there. And you can see, you can scale it, resize it, however you like. You also get control over all the custom properties we created in the very beginning, including the left and right buttons on select properties. To make it functional, let's set its visible property to a variable so we can control when we open and close the pop-up. My app submit button, I set it to update the context of LCL pop-up submit to true. So this is what we're going to use for our visible property of our pop-up. You're going to go into the advanced, search visible, and set that equal to LCL pop-up submit. So now when we click submit, the pop-up shows up. And let's resize it again. We also want to make sure we update the left button, which is our cancel buttons on select property. And when we hit the cancel button, it should set our local pop-up submit to false and hide it. So there you go. You would do the same for your submit buttons on select property. So we're going to set the pop-up variable to false once it's clicked. But here you'll also want to add the code that you have on your app that's going to run when you click the submit button. For now, I won't change anything, but you can do a submit form or something else like a patch function, whatever the case may be. But you can see it's fully functional and dynamic. One thing we shouldn't forget is to update the message. So in this case, we can do something like, are you sure you want to submit? We can change the color if we want. Let's make the right button fill a darker red. We can do the left black, whatever the case may be. Thanks for following along. I really hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time.